Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. The purpose, the power, and the person of the Holy Spirit. The purpose, the power, and the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is on earth for a purpose. He came to bring power, and he is a person. He's not a thing. And it's important to understand the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has a role and a purpose in the earth. Now, I'm going to shock you a little bit, but I think it'll be good for you to understand who the Holy Spirit is in the context of the kingdom of God. So our subtitle tonight, which we'll be working on for the next few weeks, is understanding the role and the purpose of the governor, everybody say governor, of the kingdom. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the role and the purpose of the governor of the kingdom. Now, ironically, it just so happens that today, in our country, in the Bahamas, our government and our prime minister, under the direction of the Queen of England, appointed a new governor general of the Bahamas. Now, the governor of the Bahamas, the, 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 this, this is the highest seat in the country. And the appointment of the governor of the Bahamas is an interesting example for us to study. Because a governor in a democracy is different from a governor in a kingdom. In the United States, they have governors. Every state in the United States votes in a governor. The governor is voted in by the people. He can be voted out by the people. So the Federation of the United States has 52 governors. All of these governors are in charge of a state. A state is a country. Please remember that. America is a federation of 52 states. Is it 52? 50. Am I counting somewhere? Oh, U.S. Virgin Islands. 50 states. Now, each one of them is a country. Florida is a country. Maybe you don't understand that. Alabama is a country. New York is a country. In reality, they are countries. But they all agreed to become one federation called the United what? States, plural states of what? America. So America is the name of the federation. And these states have come together. Now, the difference between a governor in a kingdom and the governor in a democracy is like night and day. I'll give an example. The Bahamas used to be fully under a kingdom. The Bible is about a kingdom. Jesus Christ is a king. He's not a president. He's not a mayor. He is a king. He's not a prime minister. He is a what? A king. And he came to earth to bring a kingdom back to earth. And his first public statement says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, Repent, for the kingdom of what? Heaven has arrived on earth. Now to understand the Holy Spirit, you must understand kingdom. The Bahamas used to be, read my lips, a territory of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Great Britain used to be a true kingdom. It's no longer a true kingdom. But it used to be a true kingdom. It used to be ruled by kings and queens with ultimate power. Now when a king or a queen is in power, their number one goal 
is to rule territory. The territory of a kingdom is called a domain. Write that word down, domain. The domain of a kingdom is therefore the territory over which that king has complete sovereign rule. That territory is called what? A domain. Please keep writing notes. It's important to remember that. So that's why the king who is influencing a domain is called a king domain. That's why it's called a king domain. So a kingdom is simply a king ruling a dome. Man. Jesus came to earth because the kingdom of heaven, which is a government, kingdoms are not religions, they are governments. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. That means the Messiah is coming to earth with a government on his shoulder, not a religion. It's very important. So a kingdom is a government, just like the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and they rule domains, territories. Earth and all the planets are God's property. How? He created them. So the whole universe is God's domain by creation rights. God did not have to fight for territory. Most kingdoms have to fight for territory. In order for Great Britain to dominate the Bahama Islands, they had to fight the Spanish and the French. And they eventually won. Matter of fact, the Bahamas used to be under the control of the Spaniards. Then the French came and fought. They beat the French. And then the British came and fought, and the British won over the Spanish. Now, if the British kingdom did not win, you would be speaking Spanish. See, whoever wins, you speak their language. <laughs> you can tell who won by the language the citizens speak. I ain't getting into tongues yet, but you'll understand what I'm talking about. You can tell who rules you by the language that takes over your life. The French kept Haiti the Spaniards kept Cuba. The British kept the Bahamas. So even though we are all a part of one chain of islands, whoever controlled the domain controlled the language and the culture of those people. Black Haitians are your cousins. Black Cubans are your cousins. I'm talking about the black people now. Same boats, but the difference is different kingdoms took over them. That's how different a kingdom can make you. Even though your cousin is in Haiti and your cousin is in Cuba, you are completely different from each other because of the kingdom that took over your life. In other words, when you come into the kingdom of God, you could be living in the same house with your wife. And suddenly you become different from your spouse. Oh, oh, oh. That's why when you come to the kingdom of God, you can't keep the same company anymore because you don't speak the same language anymore and your culture is different. So that's why you can tell when a person is entered the kingdom, a different kingdom, their language changes. Their food changes. What they drink changes. 
Is it coming clear? So the British took over these Bahama Islands and they ruled the Bahamas. Now, did you know, of course some of you may remember this, but the British had to fight for the Bahamas twice. Do you remember that in college, in school? Some of you don't remember that. They fought the Spaniards and they lost. They won and then they lost. And they came back and fought again. And the second time, they took Nassau Harbor. Whoever controls the harbor controls the domain. The harbor is the gate to an island. That's why Nassau is important. Nassau is a unique place. That's why it's the capital. It is in the middle, but it has the deep harbor. That's why the capital is here. We're not the biggest island, but we get the deepest harbor. Whoever controls the harbor controls the nation. The harbor of your life is your eyes and your ears. Take heed what you allow into your air. If your eye is single, your whole body is under control, Jesus says. Whatever you're watching on TV or on the internet is controlling your island. Whatever you keep listening to is invading your life. So Christ says, take heed what you hear. Be quick to hear, slow to speak. Be careful what you hear because it's invasion. Now, I wanted to make the point that the British had to fight twice because they lost the Bahamas the first time. They won and then there was a fight and they lost it. Now, whenever a kingdom loses property, territory, the kingdom is affected in two ways. One, it loses glory. And two, it loses wealth. Because the wealth of a kingdom is its territory. Write that down, please. The wealth of kingdoms are their territory. This is why kingdoms are always exploring and trying to get more property. Because if you get more territory, you are considered to be a great kingdom. This is why, if you study history, all kingdoms finance expeditions of exploration in order for those kingdoms to expand the territory and gain new territory and the more they gain they're considered more powerful especially if the territory has natural wealth so God who is the king of heaven which is invisible but it's real he decided to expand his territory he already ruled the unseen world he already is the Lord and King of the invisible world but he wanted to expand his territory and there was no other territory to invade so God decided I will create new territory so I can rule that too are you all excited for that? That's, a, that's so heavy, I'll just shout praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. See, you missed the whole point. It's a good place to say amen right just now. See, God already ruled the invisible, but he wanted to expand territory, and there wasn't any more. So he created new territory called the seen world. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God... That's a self-sufficient one. Created the heavens, the invisible world, and the earth. 500 million galaxies they've found so far. None of them colliding into each other. A galaxy is a conglomeration of solar systems. 
A solar system is a system of planets going around a star. That means you've got to at least multiply 500 million by another 20 million. Therefore, you've got over billions of billions of stars and no one crashing. Tell your neighbor, there's got to be a God. See, the atheist got to be completely foolish. The Bible says only the fool has said in his heart. Ain't nobody keeping that in order. So God created the seen world to expand his kingdom. And God therefore rules the heavens and the earth. Now here's where the problem begins. He decided that he would rule this planet, this one planet in the midst of all those solar systems by his children. So he extended rulership to earth through his children children and his children became therefore can I use the term vice regents local kings oh hallelujah I say hallelujah uh, let me explain something to you because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to the Holy Ghost I'm setting up the Holy Spirit right now okay I want you to understand who the Holy Spirit is you see when a king has children, we are called the children of God. When a king has children, and God says he is what? King. Open up your gates and let the king of where? Glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So open up your gates and let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord. The Lord strong and mighty. He is the not prime minister, but king of what? Glory. Glory is the heavens, the invisible world. And now a king has kids called men. Whenever a king has children, they are called prince and princesses. And as long as the king is alive, the kids can never become kings. That is why Prince Charles is so frustrated. Because he has been a prince all his life his mother would not die and based on how old his grandmother was ain't no hope for the poor fella are you following me so Prince Charles cannot become king as long as his mother Queen Elizabeth is alive because in order for a child to become a king or queen on the throne the parent the king or the queen has to die now the problem with God is you can never become king in his throne because he cannot die. Now follow God now. So if you study kingdoms, follow me now, you can never ever become a king. If your father is a king and he's still alive, never. You can never become king. So the only way for the father to allow his child to become a king, a kingdoms have a system. Oh, check history. Oh, this happens a couple of times in history. Is that in order for the king's children to become kings while the king is still alive, he has to remove the children out of his territory. As long as they are in the same territory with him, the king, they are prince and princess. If he can get them out, out of his territory completely and put him in a foreign one then they can become king at the same time over their own domain following me that's the only way that a child could become a king while the parent the king is alive so as long as man is with the father God he's a prince a princess so if the father wants his children to have the same power authority glory dominion as the father has he has to get them out of his territory so God says talking to himself let us make man in our own image in our likeness now you can tell God's plan for you even before he released you from himself why you're gonna like this he created the territory 
before he created you. Genesis 1, verse 1 says what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means he got a plan. He's going to get rid of his kids because he wants his kids to become rulers just like their daddy. So he made the earth in order for you to have power like your daddy. And that's why Genesis chapter 2 is so important. Because chapter 2 is God removing you out of the spirit world and putting you in an earth suit so that you can leave the supernatural world and come into the natural world, which is a whole new realm, and now you can have dominion over the earth. Praise God. Therefore, the key to your power on earth is your body. Oh, you all are slow tonight. Your body is your most powerful weapon on earth because it's your dirt suit that takes you out of the spirit world where your father is king. That is why in Genesis 1, 26, I quote, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth, God says. Why? Not in heaven because that's where his territory is. But you can have dominion over earth. Some of you can't wait to go to heaven. What you don't figure out is that heaven is not the best place for you. Oh boy, I just lost all of you. Just... As a matter of fact, in heaven, if you study the book of Revelation, it talks about the saints who are there. And it actually tells you what they're doing. And the Bible says they are weeping. See, you all read the hymn book. You all don't read the Bible. That's the problem. The hymn book says, you know, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing. That ain't true. Read Revelation. It says the saints in heaven are weeping. And they are crying. How long? How long? In other words, let's get out of here. Uh-oh, there's your shock. That is why the resurrection is designed to get you out of heaven. This is too deep. <laughs> God does not want you with him forever. Because it is not in your best interest for you to be with him. <laughs> oh, it's so quiet. You all okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I just destroyed your heavenly wish. You need to read Revelation 21. That's all. The Bible ends on earth. Your hymn book ends in heaven. Which one you believe, the Bible or your hymn book? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can see your face going, oh, Dr. Munro, you are just destroying all my dreams. God wants his kids to be kings. Okay, let me give an example, all right? This is, this is, a, this is a true story. The kingdom of Espanol, the Portuguese kingdom from Portugal. The king and queen of Portugal had a son. And they were the kingdom that invaded South America. They were able to capture and hold on to the territory that we now call Brazil. They had a son in Portugal. The son wanted to be king at the same time as his father. His father said, you cannot be king because Portugal is my territory. You cannot be king while your father is king. So the son had a 
desire. He said, but daddy, I want to be king. I want to be king. And he was angry at his father. So his father said, okay, tell you what I will do. I will remove you from Portugal. And they shipped the boy to Brazil. The minute he landed, he became king. So now his father was actually the king of a king. You're getting it. See, God's plan is to be the king of kings, not the king of servants. Now, here's the mystery. You got to read history. history. It tells you. You understand kingdoms. Every time his father went to visit Brazil, he became a prince. <laughs> Tell me why. His father in the territory. When his father went back to Europe, he became king again. How about this one? Every time he went to visit his father, he became a prince. See, going to heaven is not as... Anyhow. And every time he left his father, away from his father, he became king again. Jesus said, Father, do not take them out of the world. Why? Because if they come up here with us, they're just going to be prince and princesses. That's found in Revelation chapter 4. But he says, I want them to be kings so I can be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Kingdoms. That's why God provided healing. Healing is provided by God to keep you out of heaven as long as possible. See, if, if death was a blessing, God wouldn't provide healing so you could die quick. Come on, use your brain, you smart people. But he, he, has, he has organized it so well that he tries to keep you in your dirt house as long as possible. As a matter of fact, you were designed to live in it forever. Adam lived for 930 years in his dirt body, and he only lost it because of rebellion against God. It's called sin. As a matter of fact, the resurrection is not the resurrection of a spiritual body. It's the resurrection of your body that you have. I look at you, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. I know you want to go to heaven and sit by the river and eat grapes for a million years, but this ain't the way it works out. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I was born to rule. Say it loud, I was born to rule. Say it again, I was born to rule. And God says, my word will not fail. It will accomplish what I extend it to do. You shall rule. Even if I got to make a new heaven and a new earth. If earth was so bad, why God's going to make a new one? God's committed to himself. He's committed to his own plan. So going back to Portugal is not a blessing. <laughs> I am in no hurry to go to heaven. Why? I like ruling man. How about you? I like being in charge. I like exercising authority like my daddy. Come on. You all okay? I like locking things up and opening things and locking. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound. Whatever you loose. I like that. How about you? Y'all help me here now. I need me. Amen. Y'all say it. Y'all help me out here. Don't forget them. I ain't over there. They, they, they won't go to heaven. Let's just, let's just enjoy the authority he's given us. He says, you shall walk on scorpions and all the works of the enemy and I have overcome the world. Therefore, you shall overcome the world. You don't overcome the world by leaving it. He said, Father, keep them in the earth, in the world, 
but keep them from the evil in it. You control while you are in it. Now, here's the big one. Every time a kingdom takes territory, it is called a domain. When the kingdom begins to control the territory, it is called a colony. Haiti used to be a colony of France. Cuba used to be a colony of Spain. Brazil used to be a colony of Portugal. The Bahamas and Jamaica and Trinidad, you can tell where they used to be a colony of, by the language and the drink tea. Are you following me? So we will call what? A colony. It's very important now. Now, how does a kingdom get to rule a colony? So that the colony becomes just like the kingdom. The answer is very important when you talk about the Holy Spirit. You have never heard an explanation of the Holy Spirit like you're about to hear. But the only way to understand the Holy Spirit is to understand kingdoms. Because Jesus Christ is the king and he is the king of heaven. And heaven created earth to be a colony. And how does a kingdom rule a colony? <laughs> Here's how. A kingdom rules a colony by sending from the throne of that kingdom an individual who is planted in the colony. He has to come from the throne because he's supposed to carry the mind of the king so that the will of the king is done in the territory so that the territory becomes just like the kingdom. That individual is called the governor. In the Bahamas and in every other colony, it's the same system. Study your history. The most important person in the Bahamas up to 1973, up to 1973, the most powerful and most important person in the Bahamas was never voted in. Boy, this is good stuff. Please get this CD. You never vote a governor in. In democracy, you vote them in, but not in a kingdom. The most powerful seat in the Bahamas and the most powerful person in the Bahamas and the most powerful mind in the Bahamas up to 2003 was a person that no Bahamian voted into power. And they were never from the Bahamas. The governor in a kingdom is never from the colony. Follow me. Why? Because their job is to convert the colony into the kingdom. So they can be from the colony. So they have to be sent from the king to live, live. That is why they built a house in the Bahamas. When you go to Jamaica, you'll find there's a house in Jamaica. Go to Trinidad, you'll find there's a house in Trinidad. You go to Barbados, there's a house. In every colony where the kingdom ruled, they built this house. It's called the governor's mansion. And that is the most powerful house in the colony. 
and the person living there is not from the colony. It's the governor. Where does he live? In the colony. Where does he live? In the colony. Where does he live? Come on, say it. Where does he live? In the colony. He stays in the colony. He's not from the colony, but he lives among the colonized. And his job is to make sure that every subject of the kingdom takes on the kingdom culture, language, dress, speech, food. Ready for this? And they, oh, I got to teach this someday by itself. And they make sure, are you ready for this? The governor's job is to make sure. Oh, Lord, you got to help me here. The governor's job, sis, is to make sure that the people in the colony do not learn their history, but the history of the kingdom. This gets deep now. See, your history is sin. Fallen, corruption, death. But when you learn the history of your kingdom, it is life, eternal life. Savior, salvation, redeemer, restorer, reviver. He says, study that history so that you can say all of those who are in Christ Jesus are made new creations, which means you are supposed to be educated completely out of your sin history. He said, look, I don't want you to even remember your sins. I will blot them out. The only thing you remember is I was saved. Come, y'all say something. Y'all here? I'm preaching all to myself. He said, look, the only thing we remember is I have been redeemed. I will blot out your transgressions. I will remember them. No. He says, you won't even remember your history. Because kingdoms destroy histories by invasion of their own. So when the devil accuses you, you're a sinner. You say, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> don't even remember. Why? Because I was redeemed by the blood of the king. He cleansed and washed away every memory. He says, he will sprinkle even your conscience. Shh, lift your hands. Y'all say something. The things you did, you won't even feel bad about them anymore. Why? You don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Someone bring up a little path. What you talking about? I don't know. That's a dead man. The old man is dead in sin. Amen. I've been raised in newness. Y'all shout amen, somebody. That's what kingdoms do. Kingdoms change your history into its history. That's why you and I know more about Sir Walter Raleigh and Walter Cromwell and Shakespeare than we do about Shaka Zulu and Bula Bula and Conta Kante. See what I mean? Because the, the... God wants you to remember your sins no more. That's what kingdoms do. And so the goal of the kingdom is to send a governor from the king to live in the territory and his job is to stay in the territory to convert the entire territory into the mind of the king the dress of the king the language of the king the culture of the king the attitude of the king the lifestyle of the king the food of the king the drink of the king until when you visit the territory you may think you are in the kingdom headquarters
Who is the most important person in that process? The governor. And so I introduce this series by telling you the value of the governor. The most important person on earth is the governor. The Holy Spirit. He was sent from the king. He said, Jesus said, I will send you another. I will send you. My father will send another. And he will be with you. And he will re remain with you. Lord help me see. He said, I'm the king. I can come and go. But the governor, he's going to stay. Number two, the most important thing man lost was the governor. When Adam sinned, the governor left. We became an independent heaven colony. And when you are independent, you got to pay your own bills, pave your own roads, make your own life. You got to survive by your own wits. And that's why man has been messing this planet up because he's been trying to run God's territory without God. Young man, you need the Holy Spirit in your life. Otherwise, you're trying to live by your own wits. The Bible says, trust in the king with all your heart and lean not. There is a way that seem, that seem right to a man, but the end of that way. He said, look, if you try to run this planet without God, there will be Afghanistan. There will be terrorism. There will be abuse and poverty and, 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 and sinister evil and corruption and drug abuse and child abuse and, and broken homes and divorces. He said, this place is a mess because you're trying to run it without the governor. I am going to tell you what I've been praying for. That at the end of this series, every person in this auditorium will speak in new tongues. You might as well get ready for it. Because tongues, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I thought I'd put it in right now. Tongues is you getting your native country language back. Number three. The solution to all of our problems in the world is the governor, the Holy Spirit. When a kingdom loses its governor, it loses the influence of the country over the territory. When Adam sinned, the Holy Spirit was recalled to headquarters because he is called the Holy Spirit. What kind of spirit? Holy. And man became unholy. Therefore, there was no place for him to live. You see, the governor's mansion on earth is actually the human body. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself now. Know ye not that your bodies are the headquarters, the government mansion of the Holy Spirit? And thus you should keep it holy, the Bible says, keep it clean. When man disobeyed God, the mansion became filthy, so the Holy Spirit, the governor, had to leave. And therefore the Bible says the Holy Spirit will not always strive with man. He can't live in a corrupt, rebellious, filthy house. So he left. So the solution to our problems is to get him back. Number four, every man is therefore searching for what he's missing. The Holy Spirit, the governor. You are missing the Holy Spirit. Now you're not sure what it is, so you try to, you know, fill that gap with all kind of stuff. Money, people, relationships, parties, disco, drugs, sex. Alcohol, corruption, you know, just junk canoe. We try to fill that gap, and the only thing that can fill it is what's missing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
I wonder why they call alcohol spirits. <laughs> because when you drink that half pint of mm -hmm, all of a sudden you become filled with something and you start speaking in tongues <laughs> we are looking for the Holy Spirit every atheist every Hindu every Buddhist every Muslim, every Shintoist, Scientologist, animist, whatever you are, even the witchcraft people, everybody is looking for the same thing. They're trying to find what left. And what left was the governor. Which means that the ultimate package that Jesus would have brought to earth would not be a religion. It would be what God knew we lost. It would be the Holy Spirit. Write this down. Number five. The greatest promise God made to man was the promise of the Holy Spirit. God promised you, I'm going to give you back what you lost. And I'll make arrangements to make sure it can get back. Because right now you are filthy. You are unholy. So I'll make provisions for you. I'm going to provide the, 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 the detergent to clean you. And the detergent is red. And I've never seen red detergent turn something white. But apparently this one does. He said, I will make, even though your skins be as scarlet, this blood will make them as white. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give God a hand for the, the cleansing detergent. He said, I will, I will work on you if I have to lay my own life down to clean you up so I can have the governor back in you. I'm going to make you holy by myself. I will restore you to a holy temple. The Bible says God does not dwell in temples made by man's hands. God don't live in this building. There's not one church building or mosque or Hindu temple in the world where God lives. He doesn't live in no church building. So don't be fooled talking about I'm going to church to get married so I can be in the presence. God ain't in that building. If you don't take him there, he ain't there. Ooh, Lord. So your wedding dress don't make him come and your tuxedo don't do this brother. If you don't bring him to the altar, he was not at your wedding. Amen. Can I hear loud amen? amen. Praise. Acts chapter 17 says, I do not dwell in temples made by man's hands. Because your body, I made my own temple, he says, is my temple. I want to live inside of you, not brick and mortar. So don't go bowing down to no statues and no building. Don't kiss no statue feet. You hear me? Just read your Bible. Stop reading the church books. Read the Bible. I feel him inside my temple right now. Just, just, just leave me alone for a couple of minutes. I, I feel him in my temple. He, he's, he's talking. Anybody hear him talking on the inside of your temple? Let's go ahead. Let's, let's, let's just speak in native language for a couple of minutes. Roko raba hashi bras. Lift your hands. Raka sandara boshi. See that? He, he's talking on the inside. You can join him, you know. Raka rabo rasa tale rabo koshi brondo. Loto bri. See, tongues is just you getting back in touch with your native language, brother. Not a religious thing, it's a government thing. He lives in your body. Write this down. The ultimate goal of the coming of Jesus the Messiah to earth, therefore, was to restore the presence of the governor in the colony. To give back to earth what earth lost the governor himself to give the colony what it needs in order for colonization to continue the Holy Spirit everything Jesus did everything was so that man could receive the Holy Spirit 
Everybody say receive. Receive is not a word. Did you know that? Re is a prefix. A prefix is added to a word to change the meaning of it. So the word is actually sieve. Pray the word sieve down. It's a word. We don't use it anymore. It's an old word. The word sieve is our modern word, which means to own or to possess something, to have. Write that down. Sieve means what? To have, to possess. So if you have something, if you possess something, we actually say you sieve it. Now, if you look at the prefix re, re means to have back again, to go backward to the beginning. Re means to go back to the original state. That's what, that's what the prefix means, to go backward. So whenever you see a word begins with re, it's talking about going backward. Like turn is a word, but return means to go backward. Cover means to protect. To recover means to protect again. <laughs> Pent means to think. To repent means to think again. Can I go? To store means to put something in. To restore means it fell out, you put it back in again. <laughs> Ready for this one? To ward means to have to reward means to have again what you used to have it's too deep so when God says I'm going to reward you he's simply saying I'm going to give you what you used to have and you lost it so now we got this word sieve very important word because it's the word Jesus used concerning the Holy Spirit when he went to the cross he shed his blood he died then he went down into Hades and into Gehenna into Sheol into the gates of hell he took the keys of death and the grave from the devil boom, and he came back out he rose again and when he rose again with the keys of death and the grave he controls death and the grave now he has the keys he, he can open them up any time then the Bible says he came back to earth and he called his disciples and they were together and the first act of Jesus was he held their heads the Bible says and he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit all of Calvary was not to start a religion We've turned the whole thing into religion, and God don't know what we're we doing. The whole thing was for that one act. Receive. Have again what you lost. I shed the blood. I went to hell. I rose again. I destroyed the works of the devil. You are now clean. Receive. Amen. That is why Jesus came to earth his ultimate goal his final act was the restoration of the governor to the territory and we got him in the territory still he's living with the people I said he's living in the people let me close with a couple of thoughts we can pick up here next week don't miss next week but tell your neighbor I can't miss this you see, the more you learn about someone, the closer they become to you. I'm going to say this again. The more you learn about someone, the closer they become to you. So the more you learn about the Holy Ghost, the closer you're going to experience him. I guarantee you. The more you get the teaching, you're going to find that he's going to start talking loud to you. Because suddenly you are aware of his presence. His power is going to flow. Most important person therefore on earth is the Holy Spirit and the key to life on earth is the Holy Spirit and Jesus came to earth to bring mankind the Holy Spirit therefore this was the ultimate purpose and goal of Christ coming to earth was the Holy Spirit and the goal of God is not to take us where he is but to come where we are 
without him coming. Oh, this is too deep. If the Father comes to earth, your power is gone. <laughs> That's why the Father never comes to earth. Read your Bible and show me where the Father comes to earth. It's not in your best interest. Christ says when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, and then he locates him. He, he's where? In heaven. He says, you know, you don't want him to come here because you're going to lose your power. How about this one? Wherever any two shall touch and agree concerning, come on, anything on the earth, it shall be done for them of their Father who is in heaven. Heaven. See, he keeps putting him away from us because that's where your power is. What a wonder. Oh, by the way, uh, the governor, Shatabu Rikashi Brosite. You realize the governor ain't got to come up with nothing to run the colony? Oh, Jesus. England provides everything. The governor has to send the request. That's why you can't pray without the Holy Ghost because he knows the mind of the king. I ain't getting to that yet. It's a little taste. That's why the Bible says when you don't know what to request, the governor comes and helps your weakness and he begins to groan and begin to pick in tongues through you because he knows the mind of the government. Give him praise tonight. Praise God. That's why speaking in tongues is so important because when you speak in tongues, that means you ain't sending no facts. That's email, brother, direct. Oh, Koya Busate. Come on, shout it, man, somebody. Woo, glory to God. That's direct contact. The Holy Spirit makes prophets unnecessary. I'm getting ahead of myself now. The more you walk in the Holy Ghost, the less you need prophecy come to you. Because a prophet to me is a mailman bringing your mail because you ain't listening. I don't want to get in all that stuff. So all these folks running around, I see prophets and the prophet, this prophet, that. That's proof that you ain't listening to your own governor. Shout amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I get nervous when everybody want to prophesy. It's a sign that you are not hooked up. We'll deal with that in about four weeks. The gift of prophecy. Is for people who ain't listening. The goal of God is not to take us where He is, but for Him to come where we are. Scripture. Let me read the scripture for you. Jesus became total man, and yet He was total God. He possessed dual nature, He was God in the flesh. And He did that. To relate God to us. That's why he entered into a human body. He wanted to sit where you sat. And feel what you felt. He wanted to reconnect you. To your government. We were a country in secession. We seceded. We declared independence from our government and we were broke. And that's why life ain't working for you no know, human without God. It's somebody with big plans and no money to pay for it. That's how a man is without God. He's a country without a source. And Jesus was reflecting God. To show us what God is like. He came to take the fear of God away from us. 
and make him our father again. Jesus came to do a wonderful thing. He came to bring the governor back to the territory so we could say, Abba, Father. The Bible says the Holy Spirit's job, one of his main jobs, is to help you to say, Abba, Abba, relationship. Abba, relationship. Source, provider. Abba, father. Abba, source. Remember today on the radio, talk about that? So, see, God is called Abba. When you say Abba to God, you are saying, I came out of you, and I must be sustained by you. I depend on you. And so you put the obligation for your sustenance upon God. And the Bible says your father knows what you need. Abba, the Holy Spirit, does all of that. He makes God daddy again. And that's what we're going to learn in this series. That God is your Abba. Abba. Close your Bibles. I remember when I was a little boy, we were afraid to go near the governor's mansion. There are police outside the door, the wall there. Some of you all remember that, eh? You couldn't go near the, the mansion. Matter of fact, you couldn't go even near the wall. You were afraid to go near the governor's mansion. But this governor that we're talking about, that we're going to learn about, it's a great governor. He's a governor who says, come boldly into the throne room. Why? Because I have given you legal rights. I was sharing with the radio host today, off air, I was telling him a story, a true story. And I'll tell you this story, then we're going to close. President John F. Kennedy was the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. He was sitting in his Oval Office in Washington, having a cabinet meeting with his cabinet. It's a true story. And in the middle of that cabinet meeting, they were discussing the most dangerous situation at that time in the world. They were discussing the Bay of Pigs issue with Cuba and nuclear weapons. This was the most serious meeting that they ever held at the time. And they were debating whether they should go to war and attack Cuba, whether they should, you know, try and find a bomb or whatever. I mean, the Bahamas would have been involved in that right away. It was a powerful meeting. His whole cabinet was there. And he, the President of the United States, was sitting in that meeting at the head of the table conducting that meeting. The story goes that the door swung open suddenly, and a little boy ran across the room. He got away from his mother, and he opened the door. By in the middle of the most powerful meeting in the world, he ran right in the middle of the cabinet men, leaped over them, jumped upon the table and landed in the lap of the president. And all the powerful members of cabinet were suddenly silent. This little boy sat in his daddy's lap. He looked up at his daddy and he said, Daddy, who are these people? And John F. Kennedy says, these are my cabinet, son. He looked at all of them, the most powerful group in the world. And he said, he pointed to his daddy, he says, this is my daddy. It doesn't matter who he's meeting with. When you show up, you can run right in. And if the devil asks you what you're doing there, just point at him.
the Lord of praise. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.